Hey everyone, Gerard here with another video on taxation. So in this video, I'm going to answer 10 commonly asked questions on tax identification number in this channel. So let's dive in. So the first common question would be, can I apply for a tax identification number online? So currently, the only way for us to apply for a tax identification number online is using the EBIR registration services but it's only available for employers. Therefore, if you're a self-employed individual, you might need to visit your revenue district office. But for employees, you can ask for assistance from your employers if they have access to the e-registration services. So a tax identification number is a nine-digit number assigned by the Bureau for tracking and recording purposes. Taxpayers normally use this for transacting and filing returns with the BIR. If you're curious how to apply for a tax identification number, you can watch this video right here and also links in the description below. Next would be how much is the application fee for a tax identification number. Now applying for a tax identification number is free. So if there's someone asking for a certain fee or charge, there's a high chance that she or he may be a fixer. And just to add, the BIR expressly encourages us to only transact with authorized BIR personnel whenever we're applying for a tax identification number. A related question would be, if the application is free, why is the BIR asking me for 500 pesos? The 500 pesos isn't really for the application of tax identification number, but it's for the annual registration fee. For self-employed and those who will set up a business with no previously issued PIN, we are required to register our business activity amounting to 500 pesos. Thereafter, we are required to pay the annual registration every year on or before January 31. You can watch my guide right here on how to file 0605 which is the annual registration fee and also how to pay using GCash. Next commonly asked question by individuals overseas is, can someone apply on my behalf? The answer is yes, but I would advise that it would only be someone that you trust. So aside from the relevant BIR forms, your representative will need special power of attorney or SPA in order to process the application of your TIN. Another related question on the previous one, which is, would you avail online services on TIN application? The BIR highly discourages this because there has been a lot of reports on scammers with regard to this modus. To echo what I said a while ago, BIR encourages us to only transact with authorized personnel or revenue officers in your designated revenue district offices. The next question is, how do I correct errors in the details of my TIN? Now, errors or typo could be an occurrence in our TIN, such as in my case, many mistake my name as Gerald, but it's actually Gerard. So how do you correct this error? You can actually visit the Revenue District Office having jurisdiction of your registration and update your registration. So here's another nice question. I have a BIR form 1904. Can I use this for employment purposes? The answer is no. BIR form 1904 is used by one-time taxpayers. Now as an individual applying for a job, you need to update your registration. So if you would be a pure compensation income earner, you would be using 1902, whereas if you're a mixed income earner, it would be 1901. So here's a question from the young ones. So if I'm below 18 years old, can I apply for a tax identification number? So the answer is yes. The trigger for applying for a tax identification number is not the age, but it's actually the economic activity the taxpayer is engaged in, similar to child actors. But if you'll be using a TIN for opening a bank account or transacting with government offices, you will be using 1904. For our 10th question, how would I know if my tax identification number or TIN is legit? Well, you can verify it in two ways. The first one is using the BIR Mobile TIN Verifier app. The second one is visiting the RDO having jurisdiction of your registration and verifying it over there. So here's a bonus question. For estate tax purposes, what tax identification number or TIN shall be used? Now, a common misconception is using the dissident's tax identification number, but this is wrong. For estate tax purposes, the estate being an artificial being shall be given a new tax identification number using BIR Form 1904. 
And that's it, so do share this video to people who needs this information. And if you found this video very helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because it helps me create more videos like this. So this is Gerard. Have a great day.